Okay, people, listen up. We all know that gang warfare has escalated rapidly in the past few months. We've been hit pretty hard by it. A lot of the weapons being used by the gangs are restricted military issue. We need to find out where this state-of-the-art firepower is coming from and neutralize the source. Recent information points to Krakow employees being involved in this weapon smuggling. The evidence is slight, however, and there is no clear motive for the corporation as a whole. I have expressed our concerns to their president, Natalie Argenta, who has naturally denied any involvement. Argenta is coming over on the next shuttle, which arrives in four days. I can't give an official directive here, but off the record, keep a close eye on Krakow activities. I think they're hiding something. As you're probably aware, internal affairs are now investigating us, so no foul-ups, no heroics, and definitely no friendly fire incidents. Understood? Yeah. Keep your eyes open out there, do your job, and get back in one piece. We can't afford to keep losing pilots or gunships at this rate. Mission briefings are at 0500 hours tomorrow. Good luck, people. Dismissed. The automated weapons we recovered after the attack on Argenta are a new development. Possibly off-world in origin. We have nothing conclusive, but Krakow's past expertise in this field certainly implicates them. However, the attacks on the Krakow president, Argenta, leads me to believe that this may not be the whole picture. Argenta has alluded to Nanosoft involvement in the attacks, but as yet, has refused to say any more. Tech Lab's findings are inconclusive. They say the prototype software controlling the weapons used in the attack on her is years ahead of anything on the market. It could be the work of a number of corporations, including Nanosoft. As a result of these attacks, Krakow have requested GP cover for their president and their industrial sites, and also want us to lean on Nanosoft. We'll go along with the first request, but... Nanosoft have given us no reason to investigate them further. Stay alert out there, it's up to us to contain this situation. Any further escalation could turn Callisto into a war zone. Mission briefings are at 0430 hours tomorrow. Dismissed. The situation looks grave, people. That full-scale airborne attack on President Argenta has pushed Krakow over the brink. They have effectively declared war on Nanosoft. Nanosoft claim they're victims of overt corporate rivalry and request G-Police protection. They've warned us that, in addition to their new weapons, Krakow also have access to military equipment which was supposedly decommissioned after the war. It seems that Krakow and a few other corporations secretly stockpiled these weapons after the collapse. And it looks like a lot of them made it here to Callisto. We need to be ready for anything out there. In view of their cooperation, we must comply with Nanosoft's request. I want Krakow's private little war shut down before it rips Callisto apart. The rules of engagement have changed. Any Krakow vehicle may now be fired upon as soon as it is identified. We have also decided to authorize the use of military-grade weapons. Mission briefings are at 0400 hours tomorrow. Good luck. Dismissed. Well done, team. Krakow are now definitely out of the picture. Despite setbacks, the last mission was a success. The data we acquired on both Krakow and Nanosoft is damning. It seems Nanosoft have developed a way of cracking military Cortex chips. As you know, these chips save out the user's brain map when they die. Nanosoft haven't yet been able to replicate this information, but they found a way to hardwire the chips into machinery. With the aid of a personality suppressant program, these stored skills and abilities are being used to drive Krakow's automated weapon systems. Which means... Yeah. They've been using our own pilots against us. Why the two corporations fell out, we don't know, but it was a lucky break for us that they did. 
Nanosoft have kept quiet about the attack on our troops. They obviously know the extent of the information we have on them and are gonna take action. We've only got a limited amount of time. We've got to plan our offensive fast before Nanosoft can launch theirs. We've already witnessed some of Nanosoft's military capability. So we can safely assume that they have access to the same weaponry as Krakow. To make matters worse, the data dump contained references to some sort of super weapon. Unfortunately, the nature and location of this weapon were not retrieved. I couldn't alert Earth authorities until Krakow were out of the picture. Nanosoft would have definitely intercepted the transmission and jumped on us. Unfortunately, Callisto has now entered Jupiter's shadow, and that means we have to hold out for nearly 16 more days before we can even send for help. I won't lie to you, the next few weeks are gonna be tough. So keep it tight, people. Mission briefings are at 0400 hours tomorrow. Good luck out there. Dismissed. You're doing well, people. I know it's been tough, but we're starting to turn the tide. Nanosoft are still putting up a hell of a fight, but we've now pushed their forces back to their corporate dome. Our first objective is to set up a forward base, as close to Nanosoft's dome as possible. Using this position to reduce mission times, you'll fly multiple sorties to recapture the GP precinct inside the dome. Once this position is secured, the next objective will be to take out all of Nanosoft's communications. When these go down, their forces will be in a state of confusion, hopefully even panic. That's when we'll make our big push. Some of you will be using the new XAG-90 Venom on these missions. This bird is the wrath of God in the right hands. But remember, all the bugs haven't been ironed out yet. So don't get cocky out there. Nanosoft may be on the defensive, but they're certainly not beaten yet. Mission briefings are tomorrow at 0400 hours. Good luck out there. Dismissed. I am now assuming command of this force. I know that the loss of Commander Horton has shaken us all, but if we continue with his strategy, we will prevail. We now have control of the Nanosoft Outer Dome. The next stage is to take out Nanosoft's HQ at the core of the Inner Domes. The entrance tunnels have been sealed, so the first phase of our attack is to regain access to these domes. Once this is achieved, we'll set up a forward base inside and continue our offensive by taking out Nanosoft's resources. The primary target will be the main power station. <coughs> With their power reduced, we can launch the final offensive on the Nanosoft HQ. Mission briefings are tomorrow at 0400 hours. Good luck, everybody. Dismissed. Well done, everybody. You've done an excellent job and I'm proud of you. Nanosoft's plans for corporate domination are well and truly over. The last pockets of resistance are currently being mopped up. We will remain at our present state of alert until they are all accounted for. I'll inform Earth of the situation and request a relief force as soon as we're clear of Jupiter's shadow. In the meantime, the war has resulted in a fair amount of civil unrest and disorder. Quell any subversive behavior and keep your eyes peeled for any surviving Nanosoft hostiles. I want full G police control on Callisto by the time the cavalry arrives. Remember, you can die just as easily in a police incident as you can in a full-blown war, so stay on your toes. Mission briefings at 0600 hours. Dismissed. Welcome to Callisto, Mr. Taylor. I'm Commander Horton, and I run this operation. I don't know who you were trying to fool with that false name, Bull Slater, but it's not gonna work on me. I'd met some of the pilots already. They seemed pleasant enough. Horton was another story. But if I a horror story. Recently, he talked tough and looked tougher. That hunk of tin hanging around his brain now, hadn't slowed him down, though. Let's get one He'd spotted my straight. phony ID and was not impressed. I don't care what you Arriving on the same flight as the internal affairs investigator hadn't earned me any brownie points either. 
it was plain that my new commander didn't trust me. Yeah, that was okay. I wasn't too sure about him either. We both understand each other. As I listened to Horton, I noticed the medals he wore. We're in the middle a vet of a from the Naris action. No wonder he looked half dead. Well, then it clicked. He was the Horton, the last great fleet captain. What the hell was he doing in this backwater? I don't trust you, Slater, and I'm gonna be watching you like a hawk. Your first briefing is tomorrow at 0500 hours in the main briefing room. In the meantime, I suggest you take a look at your unit's database and familiarize yourself with it. That's all for now, Slater. Dismissed. did after the collapse, but I'd seen enough killing. And killing's what it's all about. When they first hit the colonies, the G police operated like any other Earth-based force. They got slaughtered by the truckload, and it was clear that the frontiers required more forceful policing. Close air support was introduced in the shape of the AG-60 Havoc. I'd flown these babies on Mars during the war, and they were past their prime even then. Lack of funding from Earth means that these ships are still in frontline service. Second-hand machines flown by second-hand crews. Which doesn't make the job any easier. G-Police are supposed to represent government authority in the colonies, but I knew the score. Most smart cops did now. Keep the population under control and try and turn a blind eye to any shady corporation deals. G police are all volunteers, usually vets with time on their hands. There's a few high minded idealists who think they can make a difference, but the majority are just running from problems back on Earth. The G police ask no questions. If you're willing and you're up to it, you're in. Elaine Slater was one of the idealists. She was on her fourth tour as a Havoc pilot on Callisto, and now she's dead. Another good cop among many. They don't keep count anymore, but Elaine Slater was different. She was my sister. The inquiry gave a verdict of suicide linked to stress and depression. I didn't buy that. Elaine had won commendations for closing a couple of big cases, and she'd even hinted at a new romance. Depression just didn't fit the picture. If I didn't believe the suicide verdict, that left only one option. Someone murdered her and went to the trouble of covering it up. I had to know the truth. With a couple of street contacts and most of my savings, I bought a new identity and signed up as a Havoc pilot in the colonies. My military record got me a posting to the main hotspot, Callisto, to Elaine's old unit. I knew I'd have to watch my back out there. If anyone found out I was Elaine's brother, I was as good as dead. Twenty fifty-seven. 
Earth's resources are completely depleted. A race to claim every ore-bearing rock in the solar system begins. Twenty seventy nine. Tension grows as opposing nations compete for ever declining resources and expand their military capabilities in space. Twenty eighty five. Eurofed Deep Space Survey Ship Argo is impounded by SDRAF coalition forces. Three ships are destroyed in the ensuing police action. Negotiations fail and war breaks out. 2086. The war escalates and military resources on all sides are rapidly depleted. 2087. The final fleet action takes place at Nereus Harbor, orbiting Neptune. Within days, the battle is finished. Damaged and badly irradiated, the flagship Damocles is the only cruiser to survive the conflict. The war is over. Powerful multinational corporations unite to take control and restore order to the tatters of society. With little remaining military or financial resources, Earth's governments are stripped of their powers and are forced to demilitarize. The construction of capital-class armed spacecraft is outlawed. 2089. The corporations continue the exploitation of space, making vast profits to further strengthen their position. 2089. Earth's coalition government is allowed to create a multinational force to keep order in the colonies. The government police are born. I'd wondered if maybe they planned on using some sort of deep space gunboat, but resurrecting a fully fledged battle cruiser? Hell, you could grease a planet with one of those babies. After the collapse, the corporations, concerned with stability and economic power, banned the construction of all capital class ships. Corporate presidents were now the ultimate authority, and boardrooms would be the battlefields of the future. Nanosoft's private little dream required a more direct approach to boardroom discussions. With a battle cruiser to do their high-level negotiating, Nanosoft could pretty much call all the shots. Callisto was the perfect place to start the construction. It was quiet, had plenty of resources, and was well removed from prying eyes. There was also a ready supply of AIs to be had from ex-military G police pilots. Best of all, they got Horton posted there. His Cortex chip was to form the basis of the cruiser's AI. We were lucky to stumble across the ship when we did. If it had been fully operational, there was nothing that could have stopped that monster. A special prosecutor with a Marine battalion for company was en route from Earth. Speak had transmitted her report as soon as Callisto cleared Jupiter's shadow. Krakow and Nanosoft were about to be the subjects of a very serious investigation. Still, thanks to yours truly, there wasn't much left to investigate. A few gutted domes and a whole bunch of corpses. Justice had been done. What was left of Ricardo's body was recovered from the twisted wreckage of his gunship. Horton, Elaine, Tachikawa, and the others had finally been avenged. And, like I said, I never intended to join the G-Police. But now, just like Elaine before me, I reckon I've found somewhere I can just about say I belong. I swear she'd never believe it. If she was still here, that is. Morale was shot to hell. They were all talking about Tachikawa's death. Tachikawa used to fly his havoc like he'd been born in it, they said and no one could believe he was gone. The rescue squads had picked up the wreckage, but his body had just vanished. Reese, the flight software technician, was checking it out. As I listened, it slowly became clear that Daniels and Ricardo had been Elaine's closest friends. Her death had hit them hard. 
They gave me the story. Seemed her comms link had gone down during a routine patrol. She'd just lost it and piled into an antenna mast. Made no attempt to avoid it. I felt uneasy. This all sounded too close to the way Tachikawa had bought it for it to be just coincidence. I needed time to think. So I made my excuses and left. It had been a bad day, but at least we had saved Krakow's president. If she'd been greased, all oh, hell could have broken loose. Things just got weirder. Late that night, I got a call from Reese to meet her down the lab. Intrigued, I went along. Reese was buzzing like a short circuit oh, when I got there. Here. She'd combed through the remains of Argenta's attacker and wanted to show me what she'd found. It was badly burnt, but I Take knew what it this. was. I had one implanted myself. It was a cortex chip, used to record sensory data on its way to the brain, and it proved the pilot must have been ex-military. This was big news, and I turned around to say so, but the barrel of a peacemaker okay, so too suggested that Reese had a problem to discuss. She'd secretly you run checks on Tachikawa's avionics, and eventually track down an advanced crypto virus. I told her what had really happened on the mission, and why I'd had to lie. Reese wasn't convinced, so I poured out everything. Elaine, my suspicions, okay. the lot. Finally, she put the gun down. The virus in the cortex chip meant only one thing, a traitor. Could it be Horton? We had to tread carefully. Reese and I agreed to keep quiet about this information while she worked on a virus killer. It looked like I'd got my first ally. Now, Nanosoft had joined the fun. They'd been lying to us all the time, and it looked like Horton had bought it all. He couldn't be that dumb. All my suspicions about the virus and the Cortex chips came flooding back as I stormed into his office and accused him of selling us out. Horton was a cool one, all right. Didn't even blink an eyelid. Turned out, he'd always suspected Nanosoft but couldn't gain enough evidence. Being aware of the traitor, Horton had hidden his suspicions to keep Nanosoft off his back while he methodically took Krakow to pieces. Hell, you had to admire the guy. He'd even tried to cover our backs on that last mission. A recon patrol under Ricardo had been secretly dispatched to warn against any Nanosoft first strike. It was just bad luck that the patrol got jumped. Ricardo had suffered a downed comm link just before his wingman got flamed. By the time he got back with the news that Nanosoft were attacking, it was too late. The traitor was still loose, but at least the data dump from Krakow's HQ promised to be interesting. With Krakow out of the way, we could now put the heat on Nanosoft. Horton planned to fill us all in at the next briefing. I went to check on Ricardo to see if he was okay. Nanosoft's big offensive had faltered. They'd given it their best shot and we'd held them. Just one more big push. Yeah. Where had I heard that one before? The missions were getting hotter and we were all shaky from lack of sleep. I don't know what drove the other pilots, but for me it was cold rage. The thought of those butchers killing Elaine for her pilot skills had kept me going through the past few weeks. I still wasn't happy about Horton's assignment here. He'd claimed it was a last-minute change of orders. His old friend at the Ministry had promised him Mars, but had died in an unexplained flyer accident days before he should have stamped the paperwork. It felt like Nanosoft's work, but why the hell did they want him here? He had to be their worst problem. His military mind was going to be their downfall. For the others, the main worry was Nanosoft's super weapon. We still had no idea what it was or when it would be unleashed. Reese met me as I landed. Speak, the internal affairs investigator was with her. I figured something must be wrong. Turned out Horton had been blown away. Inside, Reese showed me the security camera video. I choked as I watched the security pictures. 
It was Ricardo. My old wingman had planted the virus that finished Elaine, Tachikawa, and the rest. And now Horton was gone too. I wanted to grease that creep right then and there, but the recording was hours old. Ricardo had hauled his stinking carcass back to Nanosoft with Horton's Cortex chip. So much for Horton's keen military mind being Nanosoft's downfall. Now they had all his military skills to draw upon. With Horton dead, Speak was taking over. I hoped she was up to it. It looked like we'd beaten them, but I wasn't entirely happy. Ricardo was still out there somewhere, so I went to check on how the Venom's repairs were shaping up. I wanted to be sure of her if I ever ran into Ricardo again. Intelligence were starting to piece together the motives for our two aggressors. With most of the large corporations slowly starting to relinquish their power to the United Earth government, Nanosoft and Krakow decided it was time to step in and become the new top dogs. Their presidents formed a cozy little cabal to take over the soft corporations in the colonies. Instead of tedious and expensive buyouts, these charmers planned a more direct approach using state-of-the-art weaponry. With control of the colonies, the cabal could maintain a stranglehold on Earth's resources and rule unchallenged. But to achieve all of this, they first needed a quiet staging post with plenty of resources. Callisto. The only fly in the ointment was G-Police. I couldn't believe how close we'd been to going under. If Nanosoft and Krakow hadn't fallen out, their combined forces could have creamed us. Luckily for us, Nanosoft decided that there wasn't enough room at the top for both corporations and set Krakow up. By enlisting our aid to remove their former allies, Nanosoft would be in perfect shape to finish off our weakened forces. Yeah, we'd been lucky all right. We hadn't even had a sniff of Nanosoft's super weapon. <laughs>